was hot in July in Philadelphia whenever those representatives had come together from the various colonies to look at the prospects of what to do with this land. King George of England was making it very difficult for the colonists. The laws that were passed, the marshalling of the troops, thousands of them marching in the various states of the colonies, it was a hard time. And as they came together and met at that time in Philadelphia, they were debating about what to do in the relationship to England. They had asked for reprieves, for redress of their grievances. These were not coming. But they decided that they would appoint a committee, and the decision was made to declare independence from England. When they made a trip to England and got back a few weeks ago, and in the conversation with one of those who was a host there, something in the conversation as it flowed was about American history, and the Revolutionary War came up. And he stopped her and said, the War of Rebellion. That's the way the Brits looked at it, the War of Rebellion. But that's what it was. It was rebellion. It was treason to put your name to the document that we call the Declaration of Independence. You were taking on the King of England and the strength of the military forces of the British Empire. And they were strong in America. When you read American history and you hear the struggle of George Washington, the troops, the lack of supplies, clothing, the hard winters, many times fleeing from the Brits, and then looking for an opportunity to strike again. It was hard, and we take it so for granted, the Revolutionary War, but it is so important. The Declaration of Independence was presented, adopted on July 4th. There's a document that you see highlighted down here that Earl Bigelow provided for us. Ruby had his eye cataract surgery this end of this week, and so they're home today. But he wanted us to be able to see it, a presentation of the Declaration of Independence. The first two paragraphs of the Declaration are a beautiful statement of what makes this country great. It precedes the Constitution, but it set out the outline of what it was that Americans were trying to accomplish. I've asked Brother Dorian to read these first two paragraphs, but not all of the Declaration because it's all the specifics against the King of England. If you read them on your own, you'll say, I think I hear a lot of the same stuff going on today that they were concerned about then. Listen to this, the preamble. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments being long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies 
and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. Would you stand with me and let's say the Pledge of Allegiance to our American flag, please? Attention, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, be seated.